I'm Jamila Musaeva, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of the book Etiquette, The Least You Need to Know. For those of you that are familiar with my channel, you know that at the end of each video I ask you to give me some suggestions on topics that you'd like me to film more videos on. And this is a very highly requested video. A lot of you have been asking me to do a video on my skincare routine as well as some tips and advice that I can give you. Uh, I've done a video on what is in my makeup bag, I've done a video on what is my current regime in terms of skincare products. So if you haven't seen those videos, make sure you check it out. I'll link them down below in the description box. Apart from doing a video where I show you what are some of my favorite skincare products currently, I also want to share some of the tips and advice that I've gathered over the years of my personal experience as well as observing my mother um, because she's also has been always into skincare more than makeup. So I grew up watching her and I've gathered some tips that I'm ready to share with you today. Before I start sharing those tips, I want to make a disclaimer that I'm not a dermatologist. I don't have the medical background to actually uh, say what is right and what is wrong. These are just things that have worked for me and I think a lot of you might like to incorporate some of them. It doesn't have to mean that this is the only way and this is the only right way of doing it. Each of every one of us has our routine and if you think that this, some of these tips might help you actually to improve that routine, then feel free to use them. Tip number one is never ever go to bed with makeup on. I think this is a kind of a tip that all the dermatologists agree on. It's very bad to leave makeup on when going to sleep because during nighttime your skin rejuvenates and by having makeup on you take away that from your skin to actually get ready and breathe and relax and produce new skin cells at night. Um, an important thing that I wanted to share as well is please do not use any uh, makeup uh, cleanser uh, wipes. I've never used them and I don't recommend anyone using it. There are some that say it's okay to use once in a while but I would say that when you have that you kind of enjoy the shortcut and you really don't want to do the cleansing. So once you're going to use it when you're really tired, another day, another week you're going to use it twice because you kind of don't feel like actually going to the bathroom and taking it all off, it will get you into the bad habit. I mean again it's up to you but it's something I don't recommend using. Again if you feel like it's it's better than not taking makeup at all off then of course go for it um, but having them and having that mentality that you know I can take always the shortcut and use it uh, might help put you in a negative loop of um, getting used to that and not actually taking longer time and cleansing your skin properly. Number two is always check the expiration date. I've mentioned this with your makeup products but even more so with your skincare products. This is absolutely essential. Something that gets into your skin will get absorbed by it so be mindful of that. I know a lot of us think oh it has expired but it's only been a month maybe two maybe five sometimes even more but I've you know, spend so much money on this cream, I better use it. You know, that kind of mentality can actually cost you a lot more. Um, you know, the money that you're going to save by using that cream can create a problem where you're going to actually waste more money on fixing it later on. So what I actually do with my creams is as soon as I open them, so I take the seal off, I take a little sticky note, uh, like a little white sticker, I put it at the bottom of the cream and I write the date when I opened it. Uh, usually most of the creams have 12 to 18 months, maybe 6 months, depending on a type of a cream uh, expiration date. So I just look at the month when I have to discard it. Uh, that will make me either use the cream more often or maybe I can take my time using that cream. That's why I often say that if you are going to open a cream, uh, make sure that you open and use it. If you don't use it or if you know you're never going to use it, then give it to someone who is going to put it into a good use. And Along with that, um, make sure that you don't open a lot of creams at the same time because mind that every cream has usually 12 months so within that one year time you have to make sure that you use all of them. If you can do that then go ahead and open but if you know you're not going to be able to finish them in that one year time then save yourself the cream. You know, leave it for a later time. Use the one that you've currently opened. Number three, before going to bed, even if you had no makeup on, 
first cleanse your skin and then apply your creams a lot of people usually think that if they had no makeup on there's no need to cleanse the skin you know just wash it and then apply cream but no if you were out if you were running errands if you were you went to a park if you went out if you you know went to the gym whatever that might be you had any kind of activity you probably sweat so your skin also gets dirty and make sure you first cleanse it therefore better prepare your skin to better absorb the creams that you're going to be applying at night before going to bed. Number four is pick a skincare routine that suits your lifestyle. And what I mean by that, make sure that your skincare routine is sustainable in the long run because you know consistency is much more important and it yields better results than intensity of how much you put on your skin. Um, and I've observed this in a lot of people and I see it as well on example of my mom who has been very consistent with her skincare routine and I've been doing the same with mine. As a busy mom, I don't have much time at night to take care of my skin, so aspiring for 12 step might not work for me. When I see those videos on YouTube where people take 12, 24 steps, I really admire those people, but I understand that realistically it's not possible for me because I have to prepare two other little humans for bed. That's why I've narrowed down to the most essential steps and I have kept to them for years and years. So my step is first uh, using micellar water to clean my skin, then a balm, then a toner, and then I'll either use a serum or an active oil, depending on active ingredient, depending on what my skin feels like using. And then I'll either use a moisturizer or an oil. So I stick to those steps and I've been consistent in my skincare routine. And that is what matters. Tip number five is choose your creams based on your senses. Use your intuition. Uh, I've done this a lot in my life uh, and a lot of different decisions that I take in life. I do rely a lot on my intuition and the same applies to you know, the way I feel about a certain cream or the way I feel about a certain decision in my life. And I've incorporated this kind of approach to a skincare routine as well. I first make sure that I smell the cream and if I like the smell, then I'll try for the texture. If I like the texture, then I'm going to go for the cream altogether. Actually, in Alemi Spa, they allow you to smell the creams. They close your eyes and they ask you to smell different kind of creams. And whichever smell you like is the one they're going to be using on you. And they include this as an exam, let's say, for your needs. So when you smell something your actual body feels that you need that scent so you need that nutrients in that cream i think it's very powerful and i've been using this method for a really long time after i've smelled the cream i'll definitely put a little bit on my hand and kind of apply it all over to really feel does it roll does it feel like it's clotting my skin will i feel comfortable wearing this cream at night or in the morning uh, so for me it's a lot about senses a lot about smell and texture i am by no means a dermatologist or an esthetician to really give you you know advice on what you should use um, i don't have that knowledge but i'm sharing my personal experiences and the way i choose my products it might work for you but might not um, we all have different types of skins and different kind of reactions to different kind of products as well as different kind of needs some of us want more you know bright skin other want more glowy skin so it, the needs are different therefore different products will suit us i just give you my recommendations but the final say is always after you tip number six is switch up your moisturizer once in a while to kind of give a surprise to your skin so it doesn't get used to a certain ingredients or maybe a certain texture i like uh, to kind of stick the same basics in terms of the cleansing and the toner and then i'll have two or three moisturizers throughout the year so i can kind of decide which one i want on a day that i my skin feels whatever it feels uh, so i'll just smell it i'll apply a little bit of a texture on my hand see if i like it on that particular day and if i do then i'm gonna apply it therefore my skin always gets surprised and i get to taste different kind of moisturizers every once in a while Tip number seven and i've watched so many youtube videos about skincare and very few actually of people that i've watched remember about their neck 
but neck is also an extension of our face so for me when i'm doing my nighttime routine i do it all over my face and my neck so i cleanse my neck i tone my neck i apply moisturizer oils active ingredients whatever it might be i make sure i also include my neck because for women especially, our necks tend to age much faster than our face and a lot of the more different procedures can be done on a face and less on a neck. So it's important to protect the neck and not forget that it's part of your face as well. Tip number eight is do not touch your face. If you have this habit, try to mindfully get rid of the habit. Um, my father and mother are doctors and ever since I was a child, my dad would always say, don't touch your face ever. Uh, he'd actually get mad if I ever touched my face. So I actually got uh, into a habit of not touching it. And I think that has helped a lot in a lot of different cases, especially uh, when young teenagers grow up, they tend to get pimples here and there. And you know, touching those pimples and then touching other parts of your face can actually transport these pimples all around your face. When in college, I had this guy who sat right next to me and I remember in the beginning of semester, he, when listening to a lecture, he constantly touched his face and over the course of three months, I could actually see his skin got worse and worse with every day. Every time I saw him in a lecture, I would see him touch his pimples, touch his different parts of like get the skins out of his like dead skin cells out of his face and actually that really hurt him more than did any good to him so if you have that habit please do get rid of that finish up on this point the less you touch your skin the better off it's going to be if you have a pimple instead of squeezing it instead of touching it just apply a spot treatment maybe a clay mask to dry it up a bit leave it let it be do not try to get rid of it because if you touch it you're going to do more damage tip number nine apply cream in little portions but layer it instead of taking a bunch and applying all over your face um, there's a saying in Azerbaijani language that drop by drop a lake is formed uh, This is my mindset in all the actions that I take like small steps Small gestures small actions will help you build much better foundation than just you know Going intensely into skincare and not being consistent with it same with applying the cream add a little bit of cream use a little bit of it but layer it on top of each other that way it's going to get absorbed much better than if you just take a bunch and apply all together it's going to leave cakey feeling on your face so less is more going along with that tip number 10 is take your time especially between a serum and a moisturizer or serum and an oil whatever you use because right after serum applying the moisturizer will mix it all together and they're not going to do justice for you the way each of them are supposed to do so once i apply my serum i start brushing my teeth and once i'm done i apply the moisturizer that way i make sure that my skin actually absorbs the serum and now it's ready to take in the moisturizer tip number 11 don't forget about exfoliation but don't go radical with it consider the needs of your skin consider the season that you're in because exfoliating too much for example in the winter time can actually damage your skin and make it more dry uh, i have certain days when i dedicate to exfoliation so I, i'll apply a scrub i'll do exfoliation on my lips i'll exfoliate my face so kind of a little like a bath time for myself where i fully exfoliate and then apply lots of cream to kind of make sure that my uh, skin gets enough hydration we have this tradition in Azerbaijan where women gather together and they go to a hammam, which is a public bath, and they exfoliate, they spend the day, you know, putting on a mask, sipping tea, talking. I really, really love this tradition. And for now, we're not allowed to do that. Um, but hopefully when everything is over and when the uh, hammams are open, we can actually go and enjoy it. Um, in wintertime, we would go once a month, maybe uh, less in summertime, of course, but it's a great tradition and it really uh, rejuvenates your skin and really makes you feel so relaxed. 
Tip number 12, a little mask never hurt anybody. Actually, I've never heard anyone who got hurt by using too many uh, masks. I love uh, using all different kinds of masks. Let it be clay, let it be gel, let it be face sheet masks. Uh, I'm actually now more into face sheet because it kind of less time consuming. And if you're really tired at night, you know, watching Netflix or reading a book, you don't really want to go up and wash your face. So face sheet actually helps. And that, uh, you just put it on, you know, you read your book maybe you work out and then once you're done you just take it off and toss it away uh, I have a special mask holder that I put on top of the mask if I'm working out or if I'm reading a book sitting up and that really helps uh, but if not if I'm laying down and I'll do a couple of masks one after the other and my feel I feel like my skin always thanks me for that I also do this thing where I customize my gel or clay or cream masks. So for example, I know that uh, my T-zone is quite oily, so I'll apply a clay mask on my T-zone and then I probably want to hydrate my skin around the cheeks or the neck, so I'll apply something of a firming or moisturizing on my neck and maybe something of a different <laughs> nature on my forehead. Uh, so I really like creating this customized mask depending on what my face and my neck need at that particular point. I'm also a huge advisor for anyone to, you know, when you're going out for something important, a wedding, a birthday party, make sure you have time to apply some mask before. Uh, so if you you were to make a choice between applying more makeup or doing a mask I would say go for a mask uh, because no matter how much makeup you apply if your skin looks dull or it looks like it's so tired no makeup will help you hide it so invest that time into a little spa treatment of a 10-15 minute mask and then apply your makeup tip number 13 hydration hydration is essential it's essential not only in the form of a cream but also from inside by consuming enough water especially nowadays we're also used to drinking coffee we actually consume more coffee than ever before and if you know that caffeine has this um, ability to ability or this characteristic to make you want to urinate more often than if you were not to drink any coffee therefore you actually lose more water when drinking coffee in order to compensate that make sure that you actually double the amount of the water that you would drink if you were not consuming any coffee but water is also not the only way we get our water we'll also get water through different vegetables and different uh, fruits so make sure to check out vegetables and fruits that have high water content and make sure to incorporate that into your daily diet going along with that tip i want to say a different tip which i say observe your skin's reaction and watch your nutrition and that is important because sometimes our skin will tell us something about our body or the internal reaction to a certain product that we might disregard or think oh it might be because i applied this makeup product but no a lot of the problems come from within and a lot of the dermatologists will tell you that i've actually noted this in myself that uh, if i consume more than two cups of coffee a day i'll get some itchy skin and I'll, some parts of my skin are actually going to turn red so what I've started to do is after noticing this trend, I went coffee free for some time and made sure that I had a lot of water in between. And now I went back to drinking coffee, but I make sure that I don't have more than two cups a day. So two cups of coffee are my personal maximum and I try to stick to that. And if when I drink coffee, I make sure that I have a glass of water to compensate for a cup of coffee. And the final 15th tip for today is power nap. I love this. I've been doing it ever since I was in school. I practice it now as well. Even as a mom, I try to carve 15 minutes a day to just close my eyes and just rest for 15 minutes. I'll put my alarm clock for 15 to 20 minutes and I'll take that nap. Even if I can't fall asleep, I'll just close my eyes and just, you know, zone out. It really helps to make your skin look much more glowing and much more rejuvenated. Um, so if you have an important event that you're gonna go to and if you have a busy day make sure just sit down close your eyes and that will actually make you look much better than any kind of makeup or any kind of skincare that you do 
Um, I have been a huge advocate of power naps ever since I was in college. After a long day in school, before going out, I would make sure I nap for 15-20 minutes and then I'll feel much more rested than if I were to, you know, take that time and apply makeup. Because at the end of the day, it's your eyes that show how much you know, energy and life you have on your face. Uh, so if your eyes look dull and they look like they're tired, really no makeup will give you that glow. Once your eyes are glowing, once your eyes are relaxed, your whole face will light up and look so glowing and so beautiful. To wrap up today's video, as you already can tell, skincare is more than just about the product. It's about your hygiene, it's about your nutrition, about your water intake, about your sleep, about everything. So make sure that you include all of that when you are taking care of your skin. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found these tips useful and applicable in your daily lives. And I'll see you in my next videos. Bye!